St. John's. Hey, welcome back to Backyard Bartender. I'm Brian O'Connell, and today we have a real treat for you. A gentleman who started out working in the bar business and then wound up working in local media, Jason LaCour. Or if uh, you listen to K-Rock, you know him as j -Lack. Now, he's a good guy to know on air, but he's a great guy to know behind the bar. So today, he's going to show us how to make a classic Caesar, uh, a classic margarita, and one of my favorites, a white Russian. All of those drinks are just ahead here on Backyard Bartender. Stick around. Welcome back to Backyard Bartender. I'm Brian O'Connell and a very special guest today. If you've uh, listened to uh, 975 K-Rock, you'll uh, recognize our guest today, Jason LaCour or j is it? Hello. Hello. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Yeah, because first time I've ever been here. <laughs> That's, a, that's not true. No, no, uh, I've known you. I've known you but, for at least uh, more than four months, but, so I'm after drinking here at least twice. But this is the uh, this is the first time you've been behind the bar. Oh yeah, you want? Yeah, usually when we are here, you do not get behind the bar. This is his place. <laughs> you sit over there, and he entertains you. But you're here today, and uh, you have a background in the bar business. Uh, when I moved out of Wabush from the bush, I'm a bush boy. Uh, back in the 90s, I yeah. moved out here, and the first job I had, I lived on Thorburn Road, and I went across the street, and I applied as a busboy at Strand. So I worked at, at the Strand. The oh, yeah. Strand. Yes, okay. when Gossie was over there doing karaoke. <laughs> and uh, then after that, I progressed to downtown, and I worked at Trapper John's for uh -huh. doing screechings and stuff like that and uh, serving up the drinks. And then I bought a bar in 2000. You bought a bar? I bought a bar when I, said, when I finished school, because that's what you do. You finish, <laughs> your, you finish your school, and then you get a bar. And I had a bar called The Attic for maybe six, seven I years. I remember The Attic. And yeah. all the acoustic guys, used to come there and yeah. play, all the musicians, and uh, I served, I clubbed, scrubbed the toilets, I did it all, and you gotta learn how to do this, or the people leave. So I did it for, and my mom's been working in the industry for 50 plus years. So I like doing this, because I'm like you. I like to sit down, chat to people, and this is what loosens the tongue. And it is a, yeah. a great thing to do, to have a drink with someone and uh, Oh God, it's all, about, and... it's all about the, uh, the, the companionship with people, yeah. it is, definitely. And you get the buzz on the go, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> So what are we making today? We're gonna kick off old school, calm the tummy. We're doing White Russian, like oh. we're on George Street. I remember growing up, and we used to use the Grand Prix milk, the little ones that wouldn't go bad in the cupboard. Grand Prix, yeah. Oh okay. yeah, I was like, this is why I'm the tallest of my family, right? <laughs> and uh, we used to use the Grand Prix or Carnation yeah. milk and water. Okay. But a White Russian starting off is always classic. Christmas, okay. summertime, doesn't matter when it is, a White Russian. So what are the ingredients? Well, old school Kahlua. You gotta have right. a Kahlua, it's always good to have calm man down okay. during the holidays anyways. And also, you got this Northern Keep vodka. This is a new vodka, a new product. That's yeah, good. So still made with, still, oh, still made, that's good, that's right. And the best thing about White Russian is that, I think everybody, even people who don't drink a lot, casually a White Russian is the way to go. I like to spice up a little bit though. For what you do is get a small glass, okay? Mm -hmm. The big thing with that is you add a bit of ice in a shaker because it's more of like a white Russian milkshake kind of thing, right? Okay. So what you do, you start it off. The first thing you got, you don't have to go crazy. You're starting off the day, you know? Just do one ounce of the vodka, <laughs> Wait, starting right? Starting off the day. Starting up, well, you know, 3.30, I get off work, I'm done. And then you got the Kahlua. I, uh, some people don't like too much Kahlua in their yeah, white Russians, yeah. half and half, yeah. because it, it is a bit coffee, but I go two ounces. Now, when you're doing the milk, because you know, I'm on radio, so I make money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever. So what I do is I add a little bit of the 2% milk, you know, okay. just a little bit. But the big thing with this, if you, you can't... Can, you can use whole milk. Right? Whole milk is what I... Oh, oh that's what I grow. But, but we're going to... We're using a little bit of cream in the White Russian. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake it up. Because I used to do it at the bar all the time. You get a White Russian, what's the first thing you do? You get it, you stir it up, yeah. half it stays on the bottom like, yeah. a, like some yeah. sort of ice cream. Yeah. So if you shake it up a little bit, yeah. you get that frothiness of it all. And then... Oh, That's wow. my white Russian. And the best thing about this, oh, I'm gonna use one of these look good for the environment. This has got a little taste in it. Okay? All so right. now you're sitting down, you know, middle of the day, having a little white Russian for yourself. That's the way to go. And, and it's strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's good for you. Just a, just a little bit. <laughs> That's okay. That's the way you do it. But you're not supposed to be chugging on a white Russian. No. We're not downtown now for the five for four or whatever it's gotten to go. You sit down, you chill, you have the ice, and you take your time. Maybe garnish it with an uh, Oreo if you're doing like a summer activity or anything like that. That's a nice summer drink. Definitely. This is what I, if you're on holidays perhaps, yeah. and you're getting up and it's around uh, like two or three o'clock and you're on vacation and stuff, you sit down, you have a little white Russian. 
have an hour, you know, uh, oh, Henry Burr, Big Turk, whatever you're into, now, and is, enjoy the day. Is there anything else you could substitute? Uh, I mean, you, you used the vodka and you used uh, Kahlua? You could what? use Baileys. Okay. Uh, but the Baileys is going to be more creamy, and when you shake it up, it's going to be really thick. Okay. But uh, Kahlua's the way to go. Vodka, you need vodka. You put gin in a white rush, and you're not getting up. All right. What, what, what's your favorite drink? My favorite drink of yeah, all time? Of all time. I like classic martinis. Dirty, dirtier the better. I really? mean, olives and juice, oh my God, draw you right out like you're beef, beef jerky. So when you uh, ran your bar, what was most popular in your bar? <laughs> We're gonna go back in time now. The Rev bottled drink came out. That was the first time that caffeine was added to a drink, so I remember a lot of people were drinking Rev, but back in the day, it was still the classic, the screwdriver, the rum and coke, the Tom Collins, the, like the, the, the drinks. There wasn't all these weird names. We never had no porn stars back in the day. That was only Shannon Tweed. That was it. But that was it. They were the classic drinks, and uh, you had your beer. So it wasn't really a lot, so you had to explore new drinks to make. And when did uh, the White Russian hit George Street? Oh, well, Lottie's has been down there for millions yeah. of years. Yeah. The White Russian, I remember my man drinking that when she had the aches and the bones. Oh, bro, the back's hurting. I'm not going to sit down and have a White Russian so for run, myself. So run me through the recipe one more time. It's how much, how much? Uh, I would go probably uh, uh, two ounces of milk, one ounce of cream, or you can go three ounces of whole milk, one ounce of Kahlua, one ounce of vodka. Shake it and serve it up. You're gonna garnish it with maybe some sort of Oreo or anything like that. And usually the best thing about shaking it, you get a little bit of extra ice in the summertime, it keeps it cool for you. All right, well there it is. The, uh, the classic white Russian J-Lac from uh, K-Rock. Uh, former bartender, and uh, I understand you're also a musician. Uh, I've been playing for my whole life. I did yep. it for, when having a bar, I realized that it's better to learn how to play an instrument because then you can learn how to uh, do up sound for one. So I bought a guitar, bought a chord book, taught myself, and uh, uh, I'm still playing today. A lot of 90s stuff, which was new then, which is now classic rock now. We're not gonna go back as far no. as I go back, but uh, that's good to know. All right, so there it is, the uh, classic White Russian. Now we have two more drinks we're gonna talk about. Uh, the next one up is what? Classic uh, margarita. Now what's the difference between a classic margarita and a frozen well, margarita? Well, a frozen one is when uh, you blend any ice. You can do a frozen White Russian. You can blend the ice in, oh, a, in okay. a blender, okay. anything you got. You got a cream to make it thick, just yeah. like you put starch and gravy. Yeah. But uh, a classic uh, margarita is almost like a classic martini. You shake it on ice. Yep. Uh, very uh, limited ingredients and a strong. Okay, so we're gonna make just the classic mark. We're going Margaret. classic. This is something that okay. you said, if, if you know, if Jane's Bond's down south, this is what he's hitting, <laughs> okay? All right. All right, so uh, there you are, your uh, classic white Russian. Uh, we're gonna come back and we're gonna do the uh, classic margarita. Uh, not a frozen one, just your regular margarita. Stick around, Jay Lack from K-Rock. I'm Brian O'Connell, backyard bartender. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Backyard Bartender. I'm Brian O'Connell. My special guest today is uh, Jay Lack, and uh, he is uh, no stranger to the OC Public House. He's been here before, but today he's on this side of the bar making the drinks. Now, we've already done the uh, classic white Russian, and we're going to move along to something else. Well, you got to coat the stomach before you get to this one. Uh, <laughs> you can't have a summer without at least one margarita per. Okay. Now, when you talk margaritas, I mean, people talk about frozen margaritas well, that's, and regular margaritas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, when it comes down to it, it's tequila. Yeah. Whatever you can make uh, tequila like, taste better, you're gonna go for it. And uh, just like martini, now, they started I doing like a... the blueberry ones. It, it, everything started off with something basic. I have a friend, John Summers, who would disagree with you uh, wholeheartedly on how good tequila tastes. Well, see, well, it's just like anything in life. Now it, it, it's getting better with age. But there's grades of tequila. Right? Well, uh, like I was always taught, uh, don't drive 55, Sammy Hagar, that uh, gold tequila is what you shoot. Okay. When you get down, you do the salt or uh, and, uh, and the tequila and the lemon. Or you can do it, uh, what they used to do with the snort, the salt. No, that's the one they call that the, um, oh, there's a name. Being foolish, something wrong with you, yes, shot, that's, that's what it's called. That's what it's called, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and the clear tequila is what you use in Tough margaritas. Man or something like that. Uh, yeah. There was a time that I uh, worked at a Mexican restaurant in Freverton. I looked. I was actually the main bartender there. And I uh, got around. I know, you have no idea. And they, they taught me a little hint <laughs> that what they do at home. And I always say, if you want to learn how to make a drink, find the origin and ask the people who drank it their whole lives. Okay. And they told me something that they use down there in their margaritas when they're hanging out after You're talking Mexico. Mexico, in Mexico, when okay. the bars so, are done work, this is what they do. So what is it? It's fresca. And I, and I asked what? him what, listen, and he said, I, I said, why would you use fresca in a class, in a, in a, in a margarita? I said, usually it's just lime, uh, triple sec, yeah. uh, some ice and tequila, of course, and some lime juice squeezed yeah, in. Yeah. He said, because usually, they don't use ice in a lot of drinks in Mexico. They they just use it straight because ice is hard to come by. Yeah. And he said the taste of water shaken is always a little bit off. He said, so this 
is always bottled, so they use it for the fruit juice. They don't have limes, a lot of the boys don't, just like if you're at the shed now having yeah. a rum. So they use Fresca, a couple, just maybe an ounce of it, to make it frothy with the ice, and then you should sip on it, and it makes a complete difference. I have never, I ever heard and I never heard Fresca it. in a margarita yep. in my life. And that's because it's, it's, because it, all it is is a, it's grapefruit juice and lime juice and all this put into one. So that's yeah, what they use. I, I've had a, a, a person make a, they said a classic margarita, and it was uh, um, tequila, uh, juice, and, um, one more. One triple more. sec. Uh, no, yeah, no, it was, it was, yeah, triple sec. That's it. Yeah, that's the orgy. And, that, and that was it. That was it. Yeah. And, and it, was, it was not served over ice. It was just given to you in a glass. Well, we, I still shake it up because yeah. uh, if it's summertime, you want something cold. Yeah. And last thing you want to do is sit down and drink warm tequila. Yeah. Uh, my God. So what I always do is I always get a, a little bit of ice. You add it in uh, to shake it up. You don't have to. You can serve it on ice if you want to. Yeah. Okay. And you can rim uh, the glass with kosher salt or yep. sea salt, something big. We're not going to do that today because we're going to be dried out enough already. Uh, what I always do is uh, tequila. We got this stuff here. Now, tequila is one of those, uh, uh, I'm going to say something that you can do it or you can't. And even if you can't, you did it once. That's why you won't do it anymore. But if you do it easily, you don't drink a lot of it, you'll be fine. One ounce of tequila, you got to do one ounce. If you go two ounces, you're getting a bit too foolish, especially with the small glass right here. Triple sec. It's just a, it's just a, uh, you can uh, substitute this with any uh, orange flavored liqueur. Oh, Contra. Because that's, that's Alcantara, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Uh, and how much of that? I do half an ounce. Half an ounce. Half an ounce. Because now, if you got a bigger martini glass or, or a margarita glass, or even a, a rock glass, if I'm having a, a, a margarita, I'll put it in a rock glass because it's summer, you got a buzz on the go. That there is evil. That's going to tip over and make a mess. <laughs> but we're doing it now because we're on TV and it's fancy. So what we're going to do now, we got that added in, uh, lime juice. This is the big thing. You don't have to use Fresca, but you need real lime juice. Okay. I used to sit okay. down and the guys used to have all these uh, devices to squeeze so, limes. Yeah, uh, uh, you're using what, a full lime there? Full lime, okay. real lime. Right. Now, okay. Fresca is just for and the frost. Fresca. I'm telling you, just watch. You add just a little bit. You don't have to add a lot, just a little bit because okay. it's carbonated as well. Okay. And then what you do, you, you rim your glass before. Mm -hmm. Rim your glass before because you'll go, boys, what's on the go? Do it. <laughs> no, you can't. I don't care how great of a bartender you are. Give it a little shake. Uh, Give it a little shake, right? Yep. It makes a huge, huge difference. All right, so this is JLX Classic Margarita. And everybody goes, oh, there's not a lot in the glass. I gotta tell there's, there's not supposed to be a lot in the glass when you're making a margarita. It's just like a martini. When you go down to a restaurant, if it says three ounces, it should be three ounces of alcohol. Now, if you want to add the ice, you can add the ice. OK, so um, I'm Garnish. not a, I'm oh, not a huge uh, tequila fan, but uh, I'll. Uh... It's going to be strong. The fresca is what uh, makes it frothy. So the more fresca you add, the better. Oh, yeah, you weren't kidding. That oh, is good. Uh... <laughs> if you're going to drink a margarita in summertime in Newfoundland Labrador but, for the three weeks we got summer, you got to get it in you. But I'll, I'll tell you what, the fresco is, is okay. I told you. It is okay. Now, so, uh, and you can top it up, but you sit down. You're not supposed to pound these back. You're supposed to sit down and sip that, maybe have two or three after dinner, okay. and then go about your day. But that's how I would do a classic margarita. <laughs> I think if you had two or three, you probably won't be going about your day, but you'll be going to bed. But it all depends what you want to do for your day. <laughs> but that's a, that's a real interesting margarita. I've never had one oh, yeah. uh, with, uh, with fresca before. That's uh, a, an interesting story. And you sit down and drink that, and you'll go, boy, that was pretty good. It is pretty and good. the third one, you'll good. go, boy, what's on the go? <laughs> all right. So uh, we've done two. Uh, we've done... Uh, the white Russian, and mm -hmm. we've done the classic margarita. Big difference between that and See, the frozen that, yeah, margarita. Yes, so you're glad yeah. you got that uh, that uh, cream milk coat your stomach now with the tequila floating around. <laughs> All right. So you have one more that you're going to do for us. I'm doing this for you. This my dad. For me? Yes, because my, uh, and I know you like them. Yeah. My so, dad drinks Clamato juice like milk at home. There's It goes milk, or juice, Clamato, dad drinks it every day. <laughs> We're making a big old spicy Dirty old Caesar to straighten yeah. you out after doing all this in the summertime at the end of the day. So a lot of people associate Caesars with uh, breakfast, you know. Uh, Definitely. You know, an early morning drink. Uh, say, uh, I know a lot of people who do Christmas morning. They make a Caesar, you know, and they say, or, or uh, a summer afternoon. They say, ah, I'll have a it's Caesar. A it's a it's meal something. replacement <laughs> for the summertime people. And, so, yeah. and what, what you quickly find if you go uh, south of the border and you have a uh, Caesar, you'll find that they put uh, shrimp and. Oh, uh, yeah, it's got, it's got out of hand now. There's a we're lot gonna, of we're stuff. Gonna have a few meal, right? We're I actually pickle a few things for you, Brian. You did not. I brought, oh, listen. Jaylak, don't lie. 
There we go. I pick up a few things for you, so we're going to throw it in there. We're going to make so you a classic So you are. Season. I mean, you in your own home, in your own bar at oh, home, yeah. you have pickle juice and, oh, and yeah, all of that. Oh, yeah, definitely. You all, uh, I grew up in Wabash, and if you didn't pickle it, you didn't have it. <laughs> right. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, his uh, pickle juice, and then we're going to make... Uh, oh, my God! <laughs> 18 plus. Caesar, Caesar, the classic Caesar. When we come back here on Backyard Bartender... Welcome back to Backyard Bartender. I'm Brian O'Connell. Jay Lack from K-Rock is here. Jason LaCour, a uh, guy from Wabush. Who Don't be saying my real name. I stood alone, still looking for me. <laughs> All right. Guys. Jay Lack from K-Rock is here. And uh, we've been making some uh, classic drinks, the margarita and... Uh, the white Russian. I know they're a bit strong. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, uh, the way I used to have the bar back in the day yeah. is that if you're going to give someone a drink, Give them what they paid for, sure. and you got to make it strong. Sometimes you go in. There's nothing as bad as going, oh, I can't, you know, I, I can't feel the drink. Make it so it's strong, and it's better for someone to come up and ask for a bit more mixed and say, oh, I can't taste nothing to this. Yeah. So that's how I think. So you're a guy who's full of energy. I mean, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, you, yeah, so no. I if know. you haven't noticed, he is. So what, what's your day like? What time does your day start? Well, I usually get up around uh, the weekdays. I get up around four o'clock. And, in, the, uh, in the morning? In the morning, because uh, the show starts at 6 a.m., so i got to be on the radio. Okay. And then I uh, get up, and I make breakfast for me and my son, but he's in bed. And then the babysitter, Karen, God love her, she comes every morning at four, at quarter to five, oh, and she watches my son for a couple hours and drops him off to school. And then uh, I go in and do the station until around 1.30, 2 o'clock. Yeah. And then I uh, head home, and then I got like two hours to do laundry. And then I pick my kid up from school, and then it's uh, I, uh, I'm also doing a side project with uh, with the musicians uh, online, and I book some screechings and stuff. So it's busy. You have a full day. But it's if, if I'm like you, if you had three hours, what are you going to do? You ain't sitting around doing nothing. No, you got to keep yourself busy, true, yeah. and it keeps me out of trouble. Now, one thing you may not know about uh, Jay Lack, he's also Captain Dicky. Skipper Dicky. Oh, I never got my certification for captain yet. Come on, government. Uh, for so you, do, you do screech it. For I've been work uh, when I worked at Trapper John's yeah. uh, uh, way back in the 90s, I was the guy that wore the hat, did yeah. the screech in. Yeah. And then after that, it, it parlayed into weddings and stuff. And I said, well, I'm going to change my outfit. And my middle name is Richard. So I said, I'm going to be Skipper Dickey. Yeah. And uh, I do it a bit different, a bit more adult. So for like weddings. I've seen him do it. It's I, pretty run. I've actually, I've actually been at an event where he did it and he didn't know I was there. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. I see you giggling <laughs> and uh, it's fun. And I actually yeah. changed it up a bit now, especially with the way the world, uh, you know, it's, I got uh, Capelin, I have Bologna, I have, uh, I have everything where they get to bite stuff, lick stuff, it's a time. <laughs> and people say, why do you do it? I say, in Newfoundland Labrador, if you can't, we make fun of ourselves more than anybody else. Sure. And we don't do it to make fun of the mainlanders, we do it to make you part of the family, because sure. this is what we do. And I think it's a tradition that if anything, we should build on in this province and mm, all take right. all that mainland money. Now we move from that to uh, what you're going to make this time, which is a Caesar. Now there's a Caesar, and there's a Bloody Mary. What's the, what, where's the difference? Well, the, one, the main difference is this. All right. A Caesar is Canadian. Yep. Uh, in Canada, you go everywhere. Uh, it's made with Clamato juice. Now, my dad, my dad, will have two or three of these in the refrigerator, even warm, and just drink it. Warm. In a glass, like warm milk. And he loves it, but with a, with a Bloody Mary, it's, uh, it's tomato juice. It's thicker. Yeah. Right? So, uh, Clamato, and pretty much the same ingredients. It's a spicy, you know when you go to the Bay Wedding, you get that little cup of tomato juice with the saran wrap on top of it? That's like a Bloody Mary. This is like right. a Caesar. All That's right. pretty much it. All right. So, what goes in uh, the average Caesar? Well, the thing about a Caesar, that when it comes down to it, it's just uh, Worcester Sawyer sauce, Tabasco sauce, Clamato, vodka, and whatever else you want to make. Okay. It's kind of like making a pizza. You got different toppings. Yeah. Uh, well, I've seen people add shrimp. And oh, I, I think that's like late. Like, like, well, now because they charge you 50 bucks when you get one. But <laughs> the way it works is that usually uh, I just add the rim. Now, yeah. when you rim a glass for a Caesar, yeah. uh, some people use celery salt, some people just don't have anything at all. I use Montreal steak spice. Oh, okay. And it makes a complete difference. Because uh, when you rim a glass, you usually celery salt. I find it's too salty, too thin. Yeah. And a lot of people use. Uh, the chicken or the meat one does make a difference, but uh, anything that's got a bit of a bite to it. Because when you're drinking a Caesar, the way it works is that you rotate the glass. You're drinking and you're going around like you're eating a watermelon. <laughs> so you need something that's going to stick to the glass. Right. Yeah, you, you uh, uh, top it with a lemon juice or lime juice, top the glass, and just rim it with normal uh, on a plate. 
and do it first before you add all your ingredients. Sure. Okay, let's go to the pickling. You know, you talk oh. about pickling things and you've got all manner here. So what, what, what do you got? Pickle juice in a Caesar makes a makes it. So you buy a bottle of pickles. You can you... buy pickles, or you can make, brine it yourself, or whatever. Like so, this is a, a, a pickled bean. Yeah. We got uh, normal pickles, a little uh, little cucumbers in it, and pickled olives, whatever you're into. And then you take the brine oh, and you okay. have it on the side. All right, so this is really neat for a bartender. Definitely. Where do you get those? Dollar store. Dollar <laughs> store. Look at that. You go in, you have five or six of them, and you just fill it up with all the things, and you got the little caps for it, so then you, they won't go bad keeping the refrigerator. You're, you're a real professional. Well, I'm also a parent, and you don't throw food out, oh, so I've got to put it up, right? <laughs> all right, what goes in the uh, classic season? Uh, well, vodka. Uh, you could do a virgin. Okay. But we haven't seen one of those in a long time, you and me. So, what we're going to do now is that uh, we're going to add one ounce of vodka. Uh, you could do uh, gin. I've seen gin uh, Caesars, but gin really? Caesars are, are a bit tart, the right sharp. Okay. So uh, vodka, uh, plus we also have the Northern Keep vodka, it's lovely right here. Uh, now when it comes to a Caesar after that, except for the Clamato juice, yeah. is whatever you want. Okay. Uh, Worcestershire sauce, a lot of people use. Yep. And that's that, uh, the fact that I can pronounce it, I should get a war for that. Uh, also, uh, hot sauce. This is something that some people are in and yeah. out with. Uh, this is uh, sriracha. Yep. You can use Tabasco, you can use any type of hot sauce. Okay. Oh, this a little bit. If you go too much, it's it's better to have less than I'm more. not a hot sauce fan, but my wife is. Okay, well, right. <laughs> and what we're gonna do is get some pickle juice in here, just a little bit, it makes a big difference. Okay. Uh, and again, pickle juice, just, just some regular pickles you yep, buy. Yeah, you can take it anywhere. Oh and, yes, you can get the big old ones, uh, Costco, save money. Okay. And you go out and get a big giant jar of it and you just always keep pickle juice. Also, a good hint, don't throw out your pickle juice. Like when all the pickles are gone, yeah. you can throw something you want to pickle in that. Okay. And it works the same way. That's basically what so pickle is. You have is. olives in there? Oh, olives. This one I brought for you because uh, this is, I love olives. And you can get normal olives, you can get garlic oh, stuffed. These are stuffed with uh, almonds, aren't they? No, nope, these are the garlic ones. Throw that in you. Look at that. They are, you can put them in a the Caesar, but if you're doing that, I wouldn't do the pickled bean. Okay. See? It's really good. It's good. Garlic's good for you. Well, now, no, no, vampire now. Uh, what else goes in here? Well, that's well. you put the, the Worcestershire sauce, yep. and you add a little bit of clamato juice. We're going to bypass the Worcestershire sauce because it gives me heartburn. Okay. So this is the way I do it. And then that's pretty much it. But the garnishing right now is the pickled beans. I'm telling you, buy these. It makes life difference. Okay. And that is a classic Dirty Old Caesar. Now, you can get... Uh, also, uh, different uh, types of uh, like ribbing for Caesars. You can sure, buy them at the store sure, stuff. Yeah. I'm saying save your money yeah. because that's just for Caesars. You're only going to have one or two of these probably, you know, in, in a couple of months over the summer. So save your money and do it up that way. But this is it. And one ounce of vodka won't make it too much. Now stir it up. I always say with a Caesar, I don't shake it. You stir it up yourself because you're going to get a mouthful of what went in first, which is going to be your hot sauce. All right. So this okay. is your uh, classic Caesar. Good for uh, a good day hangover. I'm tasting the uh, the pickle juice. I told you. Really tasting the pickle juice. Also, well, even when you're making a martini, but I'm this not is good to have. The vodka. Well, that's why. Yeah. That's why you go one ounce. Caesars can be evil. Yeah. Yeah. You get two or three uh, shots in that in a big glass, cold, uh, no ice, and chill the glass on a hot summer day. You're gonna stay where you are. All right. Look, uh, Jay Lack from K Rock and his classic Caesar, uh, his margarita and his White Russian, all three of those drinks. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing this with us. Anytime, buddy. I'll see you probably next week over here. I'll be on the other side, though. All right. Uh, this is Backyard Bartender. I'm Brian O'Connell, and uh, we'll be right back after this. Well, thank you for joining us this season on Backyard Bartender. I know I have learned a lot, and I hope you have too. I want to thank uh, all of our guests this season for introducing us to uh, so many wonderful drinks. And our latest uh, guest, uh, Jay Lack from K Rock, and uh, his uh, White Russian, his Margarita, and his Classic Caesar, all delicious. And uh, I hope uh, you've enjoyed uh, watching the show and watching us make them. And maybe you'll make some of your own and uh, be in touch with us and send us some photos and uh, let us know what you think of our drinks here on Backyard Bartender. Uh, we're going to be back again next season with another show with uh, more professional and amateur bartenders, and uh, we hope to see you then on Backyard Bartender. Thanks for watching. Listen, I want to thank you for being on the show. It's great drinks. Uh, you 
you gave some great advice. And I, I found out so much more about you that I didn't know. Um, one of the things I... I'm still living in Port of Swat. came from a very large family. We had to cook to help our mother out. <laughs> she had that many children, so we were taught pretty young. <laughs> Every one of us can cook, I'd say, fairly good. I grew up, we had to take turns making our special cake for the weekend. Each one's sisters, one did a, a light one, one did a chocolate one, and then we we did molasses, what they call the old fashioned molasses cake, or like a gingerbread. We learned the old way that they used to cook. Meat wasn't easy to come by back in them days, so there was no fridges, no electricity. The vegetables mainly came from our garden. Fish would have came from Port Spot. You go to the fishermen. I use my own olive oil. Now I'm gonna do a recipe that came back from great grandmother from Quebec City. Well, he's stirring this now. I have a brown, green brown. You brown your little bit of flour and make it nice and tasty. It was fish, you know, and a little potato and onions into it. I want to know the liquid to cook the fish, but I don't want too much. It was good. And we enjoyed it. Really did. My mom used to cook them. Oh, master size pot. The recipe did come from Quebec. That's where my grandparents on my dad's side came from. My mom's side, my grandpa came right from France. At the age probably 14, 15, he decided he was going to get off the boat, so he jumped ship and took the boat and rolled ashore into it and hid away under a pile of lumber. And the man that owned the land, he came out that morning, saw the men coming off the boat. He knew they were looking for someone. And he was hit away on his pile of lumber in the yard. So he took him in, gave him tea, and then he took him, then showed him where to go where no one wouldn't find him. Down in Eddie's Cove, there wasn't very many people, probably three or four families at that particular time. So they took him in, and that's where he met my grandma, my grandmother too, and he married her. It's just something when you decide you want some fish, you want fish stew or fried fish or whatever, you know, you just cook it up for a meal. It's always made the same way that my mom used to make it and taught us to make it. It was a recipe that we grew up loving. The following program is brought to you by Rogers Anyplace TV. Enjoy exclusive content for